This is why I choose to praise my God. Oshun Governor Ade Mola Adeleke says in a response to David Ozda's testimony. Please do not forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment and share and please do click on that notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video. Thank you. See the heart on news media. So David O's dad gave a huge testimony in church and his son David O reacted and his brother, the governor of Oshun State. Let me read it. Remember the Sabbath day. Amazing testimony from my hero, father, then the uncle. Proud of my big brother always, my child man. Our parents always taught us to take everything to God in all that we do. I hope this testimony inspires others not to give up when faced with those trying to stand between them and their goals. This is why I dance praise my god so that was their response i didn't know that david does that business was in the light sector electricity i didn't really know because i know they have a company but i did not really know which part so david does that said that he supplies 15 percent of electricity to nigerians so david was not actually lying in that interview when he said that they used to supply electricity he was not capping you will not blame us for not believing because i have favorite he don't to share and the project is what that he almost lost was was worth two billion dollars like if you convert it to naira that's like trillions of naira wow davido was really born with a silver spoon in his mouth so even if he wasn't doing music he would still be rich even if he wasn't doing music he would still be rich like the what surprises me most about him is the way that he works so hard for his music he works like someone who is poor but tomorrow even if he decides that he wants to drop the music he will still have the money he's a trust fund kid now you can't hate him you can't hate someone for being born with a silver spoon in their mouth you can't like you want to blame him from coming for that family no no nah. you can't blame him anybody that wants to insult him a rich poet kid because she came from a rich home if he is you run him now if he is you run him and what i like most about it that he's so humble from what i can see so down to it like it's so unbelievable if a billionaire can believe in god this much why wouldn't i believe in god why why would i have the faith it's not easy though he's not wow 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 like like, this is so mind blowing like for real for real that means no artist in nigeria comes close to how rich davido is no artist because yeah it's his dad's money it's his money also no artist can even come close like like so watch the video of davido's dad giving his testimony i'm a businessman in nigeria i'm in the electricity business i own um power plants. I generate presently about 15% of the electricity need for Nigeria. I have uh, Chinese engineering companies that work for Please me. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank I'm building almost completed by January, by the grace of God, uh, my new power plant that will be the biggest thermal plant in Nigeria. It's a 1,250 megawatts power plant will become operational in January. But during the course of the design and getting all the permits, we ran into difficult government officials. For environmental reasons, our permit was denied. The particular government official that I held a meeting with told me to my face that this, your project, will never see the light of day. But while he was saying that, I was saying in my mind that this guy is talking as if he's God. <laughs> and because we are not God, I couldn't say it out, but I was saying it in my mind that God listened to him. Because he's not God, Whatever he, has, whatever he is saying is null and void. I'm not going to be worried about it. So I left, disappointed of course, and I told my Chinese friend that look, unfortunately, we have these difficulties and it seems that it's going to be a while before we can get this going again. Meanwhile, you see, 1,250 megawatts power plant price tag is about 2 billion US dollars. So it's not 
small money. So in the process, a lot of money has already gone into design and the preliminaries before we got to the stage where we must have the environmental um, permit before we can break ground. So my Chinese friend said, what are we going to do now? This is very serious because the Afro-Exim Bank of China was involved. And that might have you know, meant bankruptcy for him, for his company, because they have invested so much with me in, in, in this. So I told him not to worry that everything is going to be all right. And um, he said that he's worried. Do you know somebody that can take you to the president or to speak to someone? I said, don't worry about it. That everything was going to be okay. And he said, are you sure? He said, no, no I'm not going to do this on, on this. On the, I'm coming to see you. It seems that you've, have, you've found a solution, so I'm coming to see you. So while on his way, I got on my knees and I prayed about it. And I asked God to make all things well. And I... So when my friend came to me face to face, he said, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, he called me Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, so what is the solution uh, about this? It seems you are not worried. I said, I'm not worried because I've prayed about it. And God is going to make it right. My friend became very upset with me. <laughs> he said, God cannot do this. Just for, this is not about God now. This is not about your church. Please, Mr. Chairman, put this aside. We are talking serious issues now. <laughs> and I said, that is the only way I know to go about it. On the Sabbath, it was like on Thursday, Friday I prayed about it. On Sabbath, I prayed as, as I always do and presented this issue before God Almighty. And I challenged God and I said, God, see, my friend said you cannot do this. So please show up. Not only to convince my Chinese friend, but also the government official that is trying to block us. Let him know that you are God Almighty and there's none like you. Amen. So I continue to pray about it. The following week, on a Wednesday, I got a call from the Ministry of Power that I should come to the minister's office. So I went. And I was handed over my permit. Amen. Amen. I didn't know what happened. All I did was pray about this. So I looked. So I asked one of the officials, what exactly happened? Why am I collecting this from this office and not the other office? And the person told me that the particular government official that wanted to block us took heal. And that he was flown to Germany for treatment. And that some of the applications for permit for other types of uh, factories, not electricity, was sitting on his table. And that his boss, somebody that knew his boss, the top person. I'm using the word because I don't want to say exactly the, the office. So his boss now said he should bring all the applications to his table since he was not there. So my application was one of those that was taken. And his boss wrote on my own application, this is, this is a very good proposal. We need electricity as we need the air. This should, this should be encouraged, and I want a report on the progress of this project every quarter. 
So that was why I was called to come and pick up from the minister's office the permit. So when I saw my Chinese friend and I told him that we have the permit already, he said, what did you do? I said, I prayed. That's what I did. He said, he didn't believe me. He said, did you, did you bribe anybody? I said, I did not. It's even dangerous. I can't even bribe people at that level. He said, so you believed your, your prayer? I said, I said, yes. He said, what happened? I said, the, that other guy took heal and he was flown outside for treatment. And he said, did you ask your God to make him sick? I said, no. <laughs> I did not ask my God to make him sick. Um, I just prayed. And that all I know is that all things work together for good for those who love God. So I told him it was God that did it. Thereafter, something stuck to the mind of my friend who did not believe in God. Anytime we run into any challenges during the process of building this uh, huge power plant, he became not, he was no more worried. Well, he tells me that, Chairman, when you go to church on Saturday, report to your God, okay? <laughs> and I will assure him that on, Saturday, on the Sabbath, when I go to the church, to church, I'm going to report to the Lord. And I don't know if it has worked for you, but it has always worked for me. That it seems that prayers that are, that are said on the Sabbath are answered faster than other prayers. And like the story I told you before, over the years, that sermon from that Catholic priest has always stuck with me. I've had rumors about church leaders, elders doing, so, doing all kinds of things, but it has not affected me. Because I've always said to myself that we are all human beings. That Anybody can be tempted, and I'm not, I'm not going to allow any behavior of a pastor or a president or whatever in the church to affect my focus, because my focus is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And my prayer is that as we keep the Sabbath, may the blessings of the Sabbath always be and abide with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching my video please do not forget to like subscribe share and hit the notification bell and please do kindly leave your comments in the comment section below